As demand in the aviation sector rises, more infrastructure like the early announced JTC Aerospace 4 will also be needed to meet that demand. Well, for more, we're joined here in the studio by Lim I Ting. She's director of the Aerospace and Marine Cluster at JTC Corporation. Ms. Lim, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming in today. Thanks for having me. So the aerospace industry as a whole, uh, what are the specific types of demands that we are seeing emerging at this time? So some of the emerging trends that we see for aerospace is sustainability and digitalization and automation. So, uh, for example, for the space of the automation, we are seeing more and more heavier and larger machines that they put in. For example, they will be optimizing the storage space using vertical carousel, and they really make use of the IoT software in order to make their premises to be a smart factory. So these are some of the trends that we really see from the aerospace industry. Hmm. Well, of course, we've, we're talking about this uh, JTC Aerospace 4 insulator. I'm just... The, the, the obvious facts off the top of my mind, 11,000 more square metres of space, 25% more standard factory units, whatever these things mean, you've got to explain that to us. But these X, this is space alone. What will be going into this space that will make it so different? So uh, perhaps I mean, I'll just share a bit. Like Singapore, we are actually the key node for the aerospace, for the global aerospace industry. So we're actually manufacturing 10% of the MRO in aerospace. So to support all these companies, we have put in different types of products. So for example, we have the multi-tenanted high-rise buildings that people will take up, like JTC Aviation 1 and 2. And so what is that, just very quickly, multi-tenanted high-rise? That means that they actually provide for smaller spaces, like 50 square meters to okay. a few hundred square meters. So, so I could be a little company, I just fill that. Yes, fill correct. That. Okay, right. But we also have like bigger players like Pratt Winnie. They mm -hmm. have gone into the high-rise building, Aviation 2, to build out their Singapore Accelerator Centre, where they will redevelop MRO technologies to be deployed at their global network. So like what you mentioned about the phase four, mm -hmm. so that is really part of our landed standard factories. So they are the landed uh, our fraction units. We can take a higher technical specification. Just now I mentioned about the automation. So they, it requires heavier and larger machines mm -hmm. and they tend to be heavier. So when we are planning for new factory spaces, we are taking into consideration that there should be higher ceiling height of say up to 10 meters and higher loading capacity of up to, say, 30 kilonewton per square meter. So the phase four that we're building out is really to meet the strong demand that we are seeing from the aerospace and industry. Changes in the yes. industry. Right, so phase four is really to fill the gaps that you've seen. Is that correct? Because uh, Salita Aerospace Park already has businesses that uh, span manufacturing, repair, R&D and training. So, so there have been these gaps identified, is that right? Um, it is an increase in capacity. So we have already have the aerospace one and two and three. The aerospace phase four is really to add on to the production capacity that we can offer. So that company can have a plug and play solutions. They did not build up themselves. But as for Salida Aerospace Park, we have tried to differentiate ourselves in the global landscape. So if you have been to Salida Aerospace Park, it's a very green and conducive space that we have for businesses and work workers. So we really try to increase in integrate estate with a, its natural uh, environment, like we have Hampstead Wellands Park, which is the first wetland park in the industrial estate. Mm. And we also have the OVA, which is the colonial bungalows that we have conserved for F&B services. Right. If we get there, Dawn will be asking about these environmental credentials. But just really quickly, what you said, uh, overall, how does this strengthen Singapore's competitive advantage in this industry? Yes, I think for Singapore, we have also pride ourselves of providing the full suite of real estate solutions. And for Singapore, we have managed to establish ourselves as a key node for the aerospace industry. For that, we, we actually try to build ecosystem. So by attracting some of the key industry players, we will be able to grow the smaller suppliers that they can upgrade their capabilities as well as gain access to the overseas market in order to be more competitive. So we are also building other ecosystems at other GTC estates like Pongo Digital District that we, for our tech companies and Drone Innovation District for advanced manufacturing. So Ms Lim, tell us about the steps. I mean, you mentioned the fact that it will be quite a green environment and we, we do know the Salita area there is, is historically quite, quite lovely. So again, it's good that we preserve as much as we can uh, by way of nature. But uh, what steps 
is it actually going to take the development? What steps will it take to align itself with uh, Singapore's economic goals as well as our green goals as well? So beyond the greening efforts as well as the development of the over where we adapted reuse of old buildings, we're also doing other steps as well. So for example, the phase four that I mentioned, they will have green features like EV charging infrastructure, more green spaces and solar ready building and laneways. And, for, and also, we are also encouraging our companies to solarize through the JTC solar roof framework. They can actually tap on with zero capital outlay to solarize their buildings. And more than 70% of our companies have already solarized. Right. And actually earlier during air show this week, we have also launched the first ever aerospace focused innovation challenge where we bring on board like-minded corporates in order to identify challenges in the areas of sustainability, digitalization, and productivity. So we are happy to share that seven corporates have been on board with 12 challenge statements. And we are really happy that, uh, that the promising startups and SME that can join us to develop solutions for them. Right, so lots of progress already. Oh, thanks for that. Lim Aiting coming this evening to join us, Director of the Aerospace and Marine Cluster at JTC Corporation. Thank you. Thank you.